it's Jenna Dawson here. I am here with Christina Skifton, who actually happens to be my sister. She <laughs> is a wealth of knowledge, and I'm so excited to have here, her on here today. So Christina has decades of experience and practice in the field of yoga and wellness. She uses breath work, meditation, mindfulness, and movement to drastically reduce stress and develop sustained stress management for all ranges and levels of stress from the small but consistent irritations and frustrations to the big, more life-threatening stresses. Christina offers tools and coping methods that can be applied any way and at any time. These methods not only drastically reduce stress, they also increase focus, energy, and overall well-being. Health is everything, and self-care is the new health care. I love that. I love, like, honestly, the moms in this community, focus, energy, overall well-being, stress reduction, we all need this, right? Yeah. And I should, I should mention, Christina is a mom herself. She's a mom of four. And so she is a busy mom. She knows how crazy life can get. So first off, thank you so much for being here, Christina. Thank you very much for having me. It's, it's really exciting to be able to speak to this topic because I am very passionate about it. And I've spent a lot of my life living this as well as researching and learning. And, um, it's just wonderful to be able to share. Yeah. Well, isn't that the thing? Like, it's it's very interesting, especially in the time that we're in right now, where there's so much information out there and it's so readily available. And it's just lovely that there's a lot of different resources. So that's yeah. great. Okay, fantastic. Let's, yeah. let's dive in. So for the moms that haven't really dove in to mindfulness, the meditation, breath work, things like this, but they're, they're open to it. They want to reduce their stress. They want to have more focus. They want to have more energy in their life, but they're just not sure where to start. Where mm -hmm. do you think is the key place for them to start? Yeah. Yeah. Great question. And keeping things as simple as as possible everybody talks about that but it's so true these aren't huge steps these are very subtle shifts that build over time that all of a sudden you look around your life and your world and you realize there something feels different so reducing stress is mostly about just the not being triggered by the events and understanding that stress happens around you but it doesn't have to happen to you so not internalizing all of these different different triggers that come flying at you and realizing that there isn't anything you can do to change the stressful events or the stressful conversations or whatever it is that might be happening and so in other words don't even put your energy in there don't put your energy into fighting things into changing things trying to make it different instead drawing your energy into noticing how it makes you feel is incredibly important so coming out of the mind out of those thinking patterns and diving into the body into sensation into feelings and all of that stress lives in our head stress is in our thoughts stress is in our mind and when we make those shifts we really understand how we have a choice to feel however we want to feel at any point in the day that's kind of that's hard for a lot of people to get their heads wrapped around because they're like, now I feel terrible. I feel stressed. How can I choose to feel differently? And so um, what I offer are very simple, simple techniques to drive that attention from your mind into your head. And the tool that I use to do that is breath. Um, so like I said, super simple strategies. And they are, it's great because they are available at any time. Um, all day long if you need it your breath is always there but it is kind of important if you're just getting started to create a bit of a routine so again just a very simple practice in the morning or another simple practice uh, last thing before you go to bed and that really brings you into that practice brings you into that routine because that sustains you in that state of reduced stress yeah oh my goodness there's so much that you said that I just want to like dive into I love how you touched on the idea that stress 
like kind of like the idea that stress lives in our head and that we really have to focus on how we're feeling because it's so mm-hmm. easy, right? To get into like, well, this is how things should be, or this is how I thought it was going to go. Or, oh my goodness, I have so much on my plate. And just to like the thinking, the thinking and the ruminating on it and everything like that. So how do we take it? Are there some strategies that you can share that when we're in that moment, we, we, now we know, okay, stress is living in our head and we're in that moment and we're thinking, oh my goodness, I don't have to live in this. I can choose a different path. How can we move from stress in our head to feeling what we're feeling in the moment and moving forward? Yeah. So one of the quickest ways to do that is just to feel good. And it's, I mean, it's, it's not the easiest thing to, when you first get going to make that shift. I mean, when somebody is feeling like they're freaking out and losing it, the, the last thing somebody wants to hear is calm down. So sometimes you, sometimes that hit sends you in a different spiral, but this honest to goodness works every single time. So enabling yourself to just feel good shifts everything from that state of stress into a state of, of calm and relaxation. And one of the easiest ways to do that is recall a fun time, recall a fun memory. Think of something you're really looking forward to do, do doing. Think of something you're really looking forward to being involved in or anything like that. Something that makes you feel, just shift yourself um, to feeling good, making that choice. Yeah. I love that because it's definitely like, I am the big believer of like the classic, like thoughts become things, right? And I can see it in myself if I'm having one of those days and I'm grumpy and I'm having all kinds of negative thoughts that just spirals and the whole day goes like that. And I see it in my kids too. Like even this morning, my kids were crabby and I could just tell that I'm like, we need, we need something to break this pattern because or else our whole day is just going to be like this. So let's do something fun. Let's get out of this crabbiness and move our bodies and stuff. So I love that. So let's touch a yeah. bit then on the breath work side yeah. of things. You mentioned that having a breath work practice in the morning and potentially in the evening or vice versa. What exactly would that look like? Is it time intensive? Do we need like fancy strategies? What does that look like? Yeah, no, it's not time intensive at all. There's nothing fancy to it. Um, everybody knows how to breathe. It's a natural process that we all have. And thankfully, we do have that available to us. And you can build a practice and there's different strategies that you can learn. But a simple in-breath and out-breath consciously where you are aware of yourself breathing in and aware of yourself breathing out is all you need in the beginning. And one of my mindfulness teachers, Thich Nhat Hanh, he's actually the grandfather of mindfulness. That is one of his most favorite, uh, famous quotes is, a single breath is a moment of mindfulness. So it doesn't have to be time consuming. It doesn't have to be elaborate. It doesn't have to have any, even any special place. You don't need to have any special equipment. Um, learning just even a handful of, of different breath practices to get you started are really helpful because there are different breath practices for relaxation as opposed to um, building energy. Obviously, we're working with different energy within our body if we want to calm down or if we want to bring ourselves up. So it's, it's helpful to have just a few of those in your pocket, these go-to ones that you can just run to anytime you feel like you need them. And um, really feel yourself down regulating, calming down or energizing to focus and be productive and ready for the day. It's breath changes everything. You change your breath, you change your energy and you change your mood, you change your focus, you change your, your uh, productivity. Everything becomes a completely different ballgame once you tune in to being aware of how you are breathing in and how you are breathing out. Yeah. I love that. Well, and especially like the women in my community, I I talk about breath a lot, especially with newer moms, because when you go from having this like beach ball out in front of you, smushing your diaphragm up into your throat to all of a sudden that's no longer there. And it's almost like you're like learning how to breathe without that beach ball again. And then in times of stress, which motherhood can bring some stress into your life at times, Uh, you tend to get like shallower breaths and you're not getting like that big, deep breath. And I find that 
for me personally, when I'm having those days when it's just like it's feeling like a lot, it's a couple of big deep breaths, just really getting that diaphragm to expand and contract can honestly, yeah, like you said, work. One yeah. Minute. Yeah. And it's a lot of what I teach really just trains those accessory muscles around your thoracic cavity that support your breathing and to support a real deep inhale and a real just full complete exhale, which is, which is far more important than the inhale part. Yeah. So yeah, it's quite amazing. Yeah. That's fantastic. So one of the things that I know comes up a lot for a lot of moms is this idea of self care and mm -hmm. feeling guilty taking time for themselves. Now, obviously yeah. breath work, it's something that we can do quickly throughout the day, but some of the other strategies, some of the other um, self care kind of stuff, including like meditation, journaling, yoga, all these different kinds of um, techniques that you bring into your work can be a bit more time consuming. And, and some moms might feel guilty for taking right. time away from their kids. So do you have any advice or tips for those moms? Yeah. yeah, such a good question because you're right. And the whole category of self-care is ginormous. I mean, it is everything from what I teach to then the other side of the spectrum where you're going out and you're, you're um, enjoying social situations or you're at a spa or you are having a warm bath or a cup of wine or a cup of tea or something like that. And so it's really important that if you're thinking about a self-care practice, that it doesn't feel like just one more thing to do. Because uh, like you said, moms are busy. I live it. I, I hear about it, everything. And so the, the type of self-care that I teach initially, when people are just wanting to sort of experience what all of this world of mindfulness and meditation and breathing and yoga is, is it's so simple that it can just be woven into everything that you're doing throughout your day. And that's important because you don't want to feel like there's just one more thing. You don't want it to feel like a chore. I don't give you a list of 10 things that you should do throughout your day and this is going to reduce your stress. It's <laughs> <laughs> just going to add to your stress. That's just more things to do, right? And we don't need to get another list done. We just want to feel like we're getting ourselves through the day. And so what I offer is an invitation to a new lifestyle, a new way of living from a place of reduced stress and increased joy and happiness and those really good feelings. And to me, self-care, what it really is, is a lot of how you talk to yourself, mm. what your thoughts are, mm. how you honor yourself, who and what situations you might be giving your power away to that you shouldn't be, how you're judging yourself or others. And taking care of all of that, to me, is what is self-care. And that is going to sustain you in a state of feeling good always so that you don't have to run to those things that you went to, went to in the past for potentially self-care that was very short-lived. I mean, it's fun to enjoy great things, but when they're done, they're done, right? If we can get ourselves to a place of just always feeling good, that has a positive impact. And it's, if it's, it is a practice and it is, it should be practiced and if done properly, it will sustain you there. Yeah. I love that. Cause I definitely think that like, that's the struggle, right? You don't want just another thing on your to-do list. And you also, you got to make sure that it is a lifelong thing. It's not just like I go and take a bubble bath and I feel good, or I go for a massage and I feel good, or I go and exercise and I feel good. Like it has to be this something that you can carry throughout your entire day. Yes. yes. But it's not, it's not huge and radical changes either. It's these very subtle little shifts with these very powerful yet um, minuscule tools that you create your little tool belt for or your toolbox that you can just pick, pick from in whatever situation you're in um, to support you. And in terms of the guilt, the guilt is a huge thing. Every mom experiences it especially. I don't know why moms experience more guilt than the rest of the population, but it is there and it is heavy. And just like any other kind of guilt, it really does stem from a place of, of inadequacy feelings. 
yeah. and shame, uh, fear, anxieties, th those personal worries. And one of my, one of a very powerful tool that I have my clients work with or my students um, in sessions that we're having is having that having the mom ex try to feel themselves as a child. So imagine yourself as a five-year-old. What are your needs? What do you need that you are not getting right now in this moment? And I knew I used the analogy of, of that child, whether it's your child or imagining yourself becoming hurt. So if it is your child and they run, they're playing and they fall and they skin their knee, what is your, as the mom, your initial reaction, your response? You run to them. You hold them. You validate their feelings. You just stay with them until the tears stop and they feel better and that smile comes back. And you make sure that their pain is heard and, and seen as well. And very quickly, they get on, they get up and they get on with their way and everything is fine. There's no lingering anything. Skins the knee. Mom was there. She held me. She felt me. She saw my pain and she assured me it would be better. On we go. So I asked the question of what would happen if you saw yourself that way? And your hurt isn't necessarily a skinned knee. You're not going to fall at the playground and skin your knee, but maybe your hurt is you feel so guilty about raising your voice or yelling um, at your kids sometime in the day because you were really frustrated about something. And it may have been about the kids, it may not have been, but whatever, you were frustrated and you had a moment of vulnerability. So what if you were to treat yourself the same way you were to treat your child or yourself as a five-year-old child? What if you were to run to yourself and hold yourself? validate your feelings assure yourself that you're going to feel better really soon and just make sure that you see yourself and you see that pain and you see those feelings and you hear anything you need to hear any message that you need to send yourself and you don't let go until you are ready to go and the, and the smiles come back and the happiness comes back that mindset isn't going it's not going to change the event it's not going to go back and erase the frustration or the yelling or whatever it is that you experienced um but it's not going to leave you feeling crummy so typically the standard response would be to go into that hours long cycle of just over analyzing and rehashing and all of that in that place of guilt and you feel crummy and that stays for hours and hours after. And how does that affect the rest of your day? How does that affect the rest of your family, the rest of everybody around you? Guilt will always look for punishment. And punishment is pain. It, it causes pain. So why? Why would we want to cause ourselves pain when it's so important to us that we don't cause our kids pain? Yeah. So it's not anything where... We even have to feel guilty about in terms of putting ourselves first because we're not necessarily putting ourselves first. We're just holding ourselves. We're honoring ourselves in as high of a place, in a high of a space, a high of a, vi a vibration as we would to those that we love and we feel compassion towards. Wow. That was super powerful. That's such a unique way of looking at it in a powerful way. I'm yeah, looking at it for sure. Cause I think, yeah. yeah, so many moms are in this place where they're, they don't give themselves the same compassion that they would no. give their kids. So that is amazing. And they need to just know that they, they need to feel empowered that they can at any moment. If you need something that you didn't get either as a child or today, you have every opportunity and power to give that to yourself. Yeah. And it just simply ties into you and your feelings, the sensations in your body. Again, driving that attention out of your mind, coming into the body to feel as opposed to think. I love that. That's yeah. fantastic. I think that's a super powerful place to introduce um, your website and a little bit more about how you can support people. So 
People can find you at www.care.yoga, correct? Yes. And it, just for clarity, because I know it's, it's kind of crazy and new, but yoga is the extension. So there is no okay. .com. There's no .ca. It is, uh, yoga is the extension. Yeah. Great. Fantastic. And what co- sort of services can people expect from you? Yeah, so we do a a whole variety of things. One of our biggest focus is actually the corporate environment. And so we support a lot of businesses uh, with a a lifestyle of yoga. And we also have a, um, what is called the care club. So it is a monthly access and there are various different exercises um, as well as meditations, breathwork practices, yoga in terms of movement as well as a um, access to the live classes so that platform is all online and then we also offer one-on-one sessions for anybody looking to kind of go more the customized route for starting to work on this new lifestyle amazing awesome i love that that's fantastic support well thank you so much for being here christina thank you so much jenna Hey, does your body feel pretty different since becoming a mom and you just wish you could feel stronger and more like yourself again? If this sounds like you, I want you to know that the solution isn't to push yourself harder or work out more. What you need is a whole new way of thinking about your body and the right proven postpartum fitness strategies. Because you're a mom now, your life and body is suddenly drastically different and what worked pre-baby is not what will work now. You need a new approach. You need to know how to work out safely after baby. And that happens to be the name of my free program. You can head to jennadalton.com forward slash free, where you can snag three 15 minute home workouts so you can regain your strength in two key areas moms need to focus on the most. And you'll also learn the number one secret you need to know about postpartum fitness that you probably haven't heard from anyone else, even your doctor. Head to jennadalton.com forward slash free to get it.